Hello and a very warm welcome to everyone joining us for today's Select Science webinar titled Modelling the Tumour Microenvironment, an in vitro T-cell exhaustion model for the characterization of multi-specific biologics and immunotherapies. My name is Jemima Arnold and I'll be moderating today's presentation. I'm delighted to be joined by our guest speaker, Dr. Agapitos Patakis, Chief Scientific Officer for Antibody Analytics. This webinar will, dis will discuss the benefits and limitations of modeling the tumor microenvironment immune cell infiltrate with the in vitro cell-based assay and present a T-cell exhaustion where healthy human donor cells are employed. Following the presentation, we will have time for a question and answer session. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to submit these in the box to the right of your screen. Without further delay, I would like to hand over to our speaker, Agapitos, and I'd like to thank them again for presenting for us today. Uh, thank you everyone for, for joining us today for this webinar, uh, in which we will present our in vitro T-cell exhaustion model and how we use it for assessing uh, our, our customer uh, um, therapeutics. Um, before we start, we'd like to thank uh, obviously Select Science that provides us with the platform to present uh, our work today, and uh, obviously Agilent that uh, facilitated this webinar and sponsored this. Um, uh, most of the data we present today were generated with uh, instrument uh, uh, that uh, Agilent is offering, and such as the Novocyte flow cytometer and the Excelgen's real-time cell uh, analyzer. So my talk will be divided in four sections. Um, in the first part, I will uh, introduce uh, our company, Antibody Analytics, who we are and what, how we work with our clients. And then I will move on to the science part, and I will provide a brief uh, background on T-cell exhaustion and uh, why it is important uh, for, for cancer pathology. Uh, I will then move back to our in vitro model, um, uh, present the basic characteristics of it, and how we use it to uh, assess therapeutics, presenting uh, a few case studies uh, that we use the model. So starting, uh, our company Antibody Analytics is, a, is an immunology-focused uh, contract research organization. Uh, we were founded in um, uh, uh, 2015, we're based in, in Scotland, a few miles outside uh, Glasgow, where our facilities uh, are based. Uh, we employ more than 70 employees. Uh, most of them are scientists that are uh, specializing in human immunology and uh, bioanalysis of antibody-based therapeutics. Uh, we're a world leader in human immunology research services, and we have a focus on immuno-oncology, autoimmunity, and biosimilar therapeutics. And we apply a unique combination of uh, immunology, bioanalytic and molecular biology expertise to uh, develop uh, advanced experimental models. And one of these is um, uh, the exhaustion model I will present today. Uh, as the company name says, we are based, uh, we are focused on anti-based uh, drugs for monoclonal antibodies, uh, by similar to multi-specific modalities, but we also have expertise in uh, advanced medicines such as uh, immune cell therapies. Uh, we support uh, a global customer basis um, and we operate from the very early stages of uh, drug discovery to, um, um, uh, to the clinic, especially with the development of uh, potency assays for uh, product characterization. Uh, one of the ambitions of our uh, immunology services is to um, uh, uh, develop models with translational power. Uh, and one of the first things we want to do was to generate uh, models that can uh, emulate um, uh, uh, the tumor microenvironment, especially the, the, the immune uh, uh, infiltrate of the tumor microenvironment. And as you know, tumors are not just a, a, a simple group of cancer cells, but it's a rather heterogeneous um, uh, collection of um, uh, resident cells, uh, infiltrating cells, obviously uh, secreted uh, uh, factors, and uh, the extracellular matches. Um, uh, tumor cells, especially by themselves, uh, 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 stimulate a significant change in the um, molecular, metabolic, cellular, and physical context of the tumor that affect actually the, the function uh, of a lot of the immune cells and infiltrate. Um, Especially immune cells are a very critical component of the tumor microenvironment. And based on the context of the tumor, um, there's, a, a, I suppose, a dichotomy on uh, the relationship between uh, the immune cells uh, uh, and the tumors. And uh, there's a set of immune cells that are um, uh, 
promote uh, uh, tumor progression, with prime examples being uh, regulatory cells that the myeloid uh, it derives suppressor cells or regulatory T cells, or there's another set of immune cells that are actually um, uh, dysfunctional, and obviously a prime example being the exhausted T cells. And obviously there's another set of immune cells, um, like fully functional memory uh, CD8 T cells, NK cells and gamma delta T cells that uh, um, uh, suppress uh, tumor growth. And a lot of therapeutics are trying to um, skew the balance in the favor uh, of the immune stimulatory uh, uh, cells. Focusing uh, specifically on T cells, uh, as you, most of you know, uh, T cells uh, carry specific T cell receptors, and, and in the case of tumors, uh, infiltrated T cells recognize uh, peptides um, that are uh, expressed by uh, uh, tumors, especially in tumors that have a high mutational burden. Uh, but uh, however, uh, the specific tumor microenvironment results in um, uh, in generation of these exhausted T cells that that have, uh, I suppose, have a dysfunctional uh, uh, um, uh, uh, effector function and are characterized by um, a lot of inhibitory uh, uh, molecules. But exhaustion is actually quite um, an established phenomenon, um, and it was recently described in. Um, in the late 90s or the early 2000s in, in animal models of uh, chronic viral infections. Um, and I suppose in physiological conditions, when a, a, a T cell is exposed to an antigen, for example, during a viral infection, uh, there is a, a, a rapid proliferation and differentiation of the pool of antigen specific T cells that uh, generate effective T cells. And this is a, a huge expansion in the in the population. Uh, uh, so from a few hundreds, we reached to a few hundred thousands. Uh, that obviously this effector T cells will inc uh, will clear the 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 antigen exposure, like for example the viral antigen, and um, uh, the majority of them, uh, through homeostatic mechanisms, will undergo apoptosis. But there's a, a set of them between one to five percent of those will um, uh, further differentiate and uh, develop uh, develop the pool of uh, highly functional memory T cells. Obviously, these memory T cells are quite heterogeneous, but these are the ones that will uh, uh, produce the long-term uh, uh, protection against uh, reinfection. Obviously, uh, um, it is a case of ta of of cancer from uh, another uh, uh, cancer uh, incident. Uh, however, in the case of chronic uh, viral infections uh, or chronic exposure to antigen, um, this, there's a divergence of this uh, pathway, and instead of having this uh, highly functional memory T cells, uh, uh, there is a development of um, a dysfunctional uh, memory T cell in a way um, that uh, st uh, studies, I suppose, uh, uh, in the early 90s as well, sorry, in the late uh, 2000s, demonstrated that express um, high levels of uh, inhibitory molecules such as PD-1, TIM-3, and LAG-3. And when uh, ant antibodies are targeting this inhibitor receptor, specifically, I suppose, PD-1 and pd one uh, their functionality can be at least to a degree uh, um, uh, uh, stimulated towards this uh, functioning memory uh, again. And obviously, this led to a flurry of research in the area, and obviously, with the approval of uh, the PD-1, pd one and as for CTLA-4 targeting uh, uh, therapies, it established uh, um, cancer immunotherapy as opposed to the third pillar of uh, uh, cancer therapy. But what are the main, I suppose, characteristics of exhausted T cells? So already mentioned that they express high levels of inhibitory receptors, such as uh, CTLA-4, TIM-3, PD-1, like 3 and, and TIGIT. Uh, these receptors uh, carry inhibitory signaling domains that uh, uh, block the signaling initiated by uh, the T cell receptor, but by also other um, uh, Costimulatory molecules such as CD28. This is, results in um, uh, diminished functional capacity of the cells, so they have reduced ability to proliferate, produce cytokines, and obviously um, uh, demonstrate uh, 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 cytotoxic potential against the infected or cancerous cells. Beyond that, uh, these cells have been found to have um, profound metabolic changes, so they have reduced ability to produce energy through glycolysis and oxidative phosphorylation, which is the main ways 
that um, uh, uh, memory and effector T cells uh, uh, generate uh, uh, energy in response to antigen stimulation. They have a reduced ability to produce ATP, and they have like profound changes as well in the mitochondrial function. So we have reduced biogenesis and fusion, and increased uh, depolarization and fusion. So these cells basically have reduced ability to produce energy in response to to their to an antigen stimulus. Um, uh, similarly, uh, examination of the uh, chromatin profile, especially in the LCMV infection models, uh, uh, demonstrated that these cells display a chromatin landscape that is uh, very different from uh, a factor or um, uh, uh, memory uh, uh, T cells. Um, and this actually supports that these cells uh, have um, a specific committed commitment towards uh, this phenotype rather than, a, I suppose, a, a transient uh, um, a phenotypic state. Uh, and this was actually kind of confirmed as well with, uh, with the dem demonstration that transcription factors such as TOX and nuclear receptor uh, for alpha, uh, I suppose, uh, regulate the, the exhaustion phenomenon and especially the epigenetic changes that take place uh, through that. Uh, the, the other thing we need to note, however, for the, for the phenomenon of exhaustion is that the exhausted T cells are not actually a unified population, and there seems to be a hierarchy of, uh, um, of uh, exhaustion with progenitor exhausted T cells uh, that are characterized by high levels of expression of this transcription factor that is called TCF1. Um, and this is actually the ones that uh, respond to um, uh, PD-1 and PDL1 targeting more effectively. And that's, um, I suppose, uh, the transition the, to terminal exhausted T cells, the downregulate the, the, the levels of uh, this transcription factor TCF1. Um, but as you can see from this slide, there's multiple areas that um, can be targeted for therapeutic intervention from obviously uh, inhibitory molecules with antibody-based therapeutics to um, uh, metabolic reprogramming or changes in the epigenetic uh, landscape of these um, uh, cells. So um, models are required to assess like different therapeutics and obviously discover um, uh, novel targets uh, uh, that are targeting the phenomenon of T cell exhaustion. So, in the mouse setting, there obviously, as I mentioned before, uh, most of the um, um, characteristics of exhausted T cells were initially established in mouse models, with the LCMV model being the most prominent. And this is based on employment of different strain, strains of LCMV with clone 13 um, uh, strain uh, initiating a chronic infection uh, that is characterized with exhaustion under specific T cells, um, whereas the Armstrong strain uh, in inducing an acute infection that is characterized by highly functional uh, um, uh, effector and memory T cells against uh, LCMV. Obviously, syngenic, syngenic tumor models are also uh, uh, very important uh, uh, and uh, a lot of uh, they have been characterized, uh, exhausted T cells have been identified in uh, tumor infiltrates and have been obviously used to assess uh, therapeutics in this setting. Um, and obviously we need to note that there are actually differences between uh, exhausted T cells generating, generated as part of a chronic infection or uh, as a tumor again due to the peculiarities of the tumor microenvironment. In more reductions approaches that obviously allow higher throughput uh, for assessing multiple therapeutics, the employment of transgenic T cells uh, with um, uh, T cell receptors specific for uh, specific peptides um, allow the generation of pools of exhausted like T cells that can be used for assessment of molecules. However, the use of animal models is not always very transactional, especially uh, when antibody based therapeutics uh, are assessed. So, obviously, the human uh, um, models are, are, are critical for that, and uh, employing um, uh, tissue explants, uh, either through isolation of cells from this or using uh, tissue-based assays is probably the most translational uh, approach. However, there are limitations on the availability of the uh, uh, tissues and logistic uh, considerations uh, for those. So they're not always uh, useful, especially when multiple uh, molecules need to, to be uh, assessed in a high, more high throughput manner. So again, uh, in here, reductions approaches are required for that purpose. And initially, uh, things like super stimulation were employed. However, this mostly generate a factor like cells, uh, which are very difficult to, 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 to distinguish uh, from exhausted T cells, especially as effector cells also upregulate a lot of the inhibitory molecules that are uh, characterized as exhausted T cells. However, um, 
in the past few years, um, uh, exhausted in vitro exhausted models have been generated, and they are based in repeated stimulations uh, of isolated T cells, either in a uh, polyclonal or antigen specific uh, manner. And this is uh, the model we're actually going to uh, present uh, today uh, uh, to you. So in the next few slides, I hope uh, I can uh, convince you that uh, uh, our in vitro uh, T-cell exhaustion model generates uh, T-cells that have all the hallmarks, the phenotypical hallmarks of exhausted T-cells that uh, we encounter in the tumors or in, during chronic infection, and most importantly, that these are functionally exhausted. And then uh, I will also dem uh, demonstrate um, uh, how we use this model for assessing uh, different types of uh, therapeutics. So our model, uh, so this is uh, based on um, uh, multiple rounds of stimulation of isolated T cells, and this can be done either with uh, uh, isolated PAN T cells or isolated CD8 T cells uh, with uh, CD3 and CD8 targeting antibodies. And we do that usually with uh, uh, with uh, Dynabits. And we have a very specific regime, uh, regime of uh, uh, T cell stimulation uh, that we ensure that the ratio of um, stimulus to the number of T-cells is always kept constant. This results in a pool of exhausted T-cells that we uh, further characterized either by flow cytometry or we employ on secondary assays such as uh, uh, one-way mixed lymphocyte reaction or uh, uh, T-cell mediated cytolysis assays. Um, and I will uh, kind of show you examples of uh, data for that. So the first thing uh, we did when we established the model is to characterize the cells for the expression of different uh, in inhibitory molecules. And this is flow cytometry plots. We generate that by using our Quantion uh, 4025 flow cytometer that is uh, uh, offered by, by uh, Agilent. And you can see here in the first, uh, um, of, on the gray plot, this is uh, just unstimulated T cells, um, uh, whereas in the, the blue histograms are T cells that are stimulated only once and they're left in culture uh, for around the week, whereas the red um, histograms are the uh, exhausted T cells, so the cells that have been uh, undergone four rounds of uh, uh, stimulation. And what you can clearly see is that our in vitro uh, exhausted T cells express high levels of PD1, like 3, team 3, and also uh, CTLA4, CD39, CD73, BTLA. Uh, this is, are all uh, typical exhaustive markers that uh, are encountered in um, exhausted T cells that uh, uh, are found in uh, in the tumor uh, microenvironment. This has also expressed high levels of uh, co-stimulatory molecules such as CD137 and CD134, which again is uh, expected as these cells have been, um, they already have gone multiple rounds of uh, stimulation. We also wanted uh, beyond, I suppose, surface market, we wanted to characterize the expression of the transcription factors that are linked with exhaustion. So we focused on, on TOX. And as you can see here, we stimulated these cells over uh, uh, four times and then rest them uh, over 72 hours. And then we assessed expression um, uh, other CD4 and CD8 T cells, and we compare that with single stimulated T cells. As you can see clearly, in the single stimulated T cells, we could see some levels of upregulation of the transcription factor TOX. However, in the exhausted T cells, this was much higher, either in the CD4 T cell population or the CD8 T cell population. Again, uh, confirming that uh, these cells, at least in a different phenotypical uh, 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 level uh, express uh, most of the hallmarks of in vivo of uh, observed exhausted T cells. So then we, uh, we focused on assessing the functional capacity of these cells. So the first thing we did was quite uh, simple. Uh, we assessed the ability of these cells to produce cytokine after uh, each stimulation. And we did that, that the data we present here is for IL-2. Um, uh, um, so after the stimulation, we collect supernatants, and as you can clearly see, uh, after the first stimulation, we would uh, there was this rapid decrease in the ability of the cells to produce IL-2. And uh, just to note here, this is uh, normalized to the number of cells we have in its well, and we confirm also this in the transcription level with uh, RNA sequencing. A similar uh, profile uh, we also observe with in the phenol gamma production. However, this is more gradual compared to um, uh, IL-2. Uh, we further wanted to characterize uh, the, um, the functional capacity of the cells in a system that doesn't employ antibodies to induce uh, T-cell activation, so we chose the, the mixed lymphocyte reaction. Uh, it's a one-way uh, mixed lymphocyte reaction in where we um, uh, 
isolate monocytes from a single donor that we differentiated uh, to monocyte derived dendritic cells. This is immature uh, dendritic cells. And we can culture this uh, with T cells from a different donor, obviously, um, that we uh, other uh, uh, take them through the exhaustion protocol with multiple stimulation to generate the pool of exhausted T cells, or we uh, isolate them freshly and directly employ them in the assay. To note here, all our uh, MLR pairs are pre-screened, so we always know that at least uh, uh, we will have a productive uh, mixing homicide reaction, reducing the chances of a failed experiment. Uh, and then, um, we could culture usually uh, uh, these cells for uh, uh, five days and then we assess proliferation by flow cytometry with um, Chi 67 expression and cytokine analysis either by ELISA or by uh, a multiplex um, approaches such as uh, Luminex. So, as you can see clearly here, um, when we compare non exhausted C cells, which are the black bars with exhausted, uh, the gray bars, we can clearly see that the in vitro generated exhausted T cells have a reduced capacity to, to proliferate and uh, also produce cytokines. Uh, all the cytokines we have set here in the film gamma, GMCSF, IL2, TNF, alpha, and IL6. Again, demonstrating that these cells have uh, a, a re reduced functional capacity. But how, how, what about their ability to um, mediate uh, uh, target cell cytosis? In order to do that, we used a, a different uh, approach, approach. So we isolated T cells and we other stimulated uh, over one round of stimulation to generate this pool, as we call them, effector T cells, or um, we uh, uh, took them under the, the protocol of exhaustion to generate the pool of um, exhausted T cells. And then we can culture them with uh, cancer cells. And I'll give an example with a few different cancer cell lines. Um, and we stimulated target cells, I told this, with two different approaches. One, uh, we call that a bystander killing assay, where we use just CD3 and CD28 targeting antibodies. Or uh, we used uh, a targeted therapeutic, uh, 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 by specific T cell engager that um, uh, targets uh, the functionality of the T cells against an antigen that's expressed by the cancer cells. Um, we usually use the Excelsion system uh, for uh, measurement of killing, and I would like to spend a, a couple of meaning, uh, minutes um, explaining the system. Um, so. The excellent system employs uh, 96 well plates, at least the MP system we use in our labs, uh, that are coated with a, a gold electrode. So when we add uh, our cancer cell lines, uh, adherent cancer cell lines, this will um, uh, obviously adhere in the bottom of the plate. And uh, as they adhere, they will impede the small electric current that goes through this uh, gold electrodes. Uh, the advantage of the system is that when we add our effector cells, the T cells support in this case, um, they don't uh, produce any signal because they don't adhere in the plate. However, when the T cells start to kill uh, the, uh, the target cells, their morphology will change and they will start uh, deattached from the plate, uh, uh, which obviously results in a change of impedance that is um, going through the electrodes. And this is obviously measured by the instrument and with appropriate controls, it can be transformed uh, to a measurement of cytolysis. Obviously, the advantage of this methodology is that it's labeled free, so we not require any um, uh, uh, dyes or fluorescent uh, reporter genes to, to measure them, to, to monitor the, the cells. And it's obviously very simple. We just uh, add the cells, add the uh, effector cells, and we immediately can measure the, uh, uh, the, the cytolysis. It also provides kinetic data, which is obviously a, a richer data, and as I'll show you in the next slide, provide more information about uh, the, the, the interventions we do. And obviously, it can be combined with, with other readouts, and routinely we, we use that with flow cytometry um, uh, to assess uh, activation of the T cells or proliferation, and obviously cytokine analysis. This is, I suppose, one of our workforce uh, methodologies. We use it with Conventional monoclonal antibodies for ADCCs, immune cell engagers, obviously T cell therapies, and antibody drug uh, conjugates. So there is the type of uh, uh, data we get from uh, from this uh, assay system. 
Uh, so this, in this case, we used healers as as our target cells, and we induced killing uh, by just adding uh, CD3 and CD28 antibodies. And this is, I suppose, the bystander killing type of assay I mentioned before. Um, and as you can see, when we used uh, our single stimulated T cells, they can um, uh, kill quite potently the the healer cells, but it's around 80% target cell uh, killing uh, by the end of the assay. But when we use the grosser T cells, they obviously uh, are uh, much more deficient compared to the uh, effector cells to to, in, to uh, induce target cell killing. And again, when we can when we measure the half time of killing with the single stimulated T cells, um, we have uh, that uh, there is around 50% of target cell uh, uh, death in uh, 25 hours, whereas this uh, is much longer with the exhausted T cells, which is around 38 hours in this case. Again, demonstrated that the exhausted T cells are um, um, are more functionally, um, uh, um, they have are functionally diminished uh, as well. Uh, then we want to to demonstrate that in a system that obviously has uh, targeted killing, and that to, and to induce that we employ the bispecific T cell engager um, uh, against HER2 that is expressed by uh, the tar uh, the cancer cells GMT1. And in this case, uh, we um, employed the area under the curve for each concentration of this specific test and engager. In that way, we can transform the as well as kinetic uh, data to an endpoint readout um, and obviously generate uh, uh, 4PL uh, uh, curves to um, uh, estimate uh, things like Emacs and EC50. And you can clearly see from this uh, graph as well that uh, the exhausted T cells have reduced capacity to induce target cell cytosis and also uh, induced uh, cytokine production uh, uh, by this uh, when, the, when the T cell engager is uh, employed. So, how about so far I have convinced you that uh, the generated exhausted T cells are um, uh, functionally um, uh, impaired compared to effector cells. So in the next few slides, I will um, demonstrate how we use this model to assess um, uh, different therapeutics. I will start obviously uh, with the typical PD-1 and PD-L1 uh, um, targeting antibodies, uh, and I will demonstrate data with nivolumab and atezolizumab, and then uh, I will talk about two, I suppose, case studies. Uh, one that we worked with uh, uh, our, one of our customers, IGM uh, 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 Biosciences, which we employ uh, uh, targeted therapeutics uh, against PDL1 and uh, IL-15 stimulation. And then uh, we'll go to a different modality, which is a small molecule, which again worked with uh, a different company called Nubus Therapeutics uh, and the HPK1 uh, uh, inhibitor. So starting with uh, PD-1 and PD-L1 blockade, um, I mean, uh, there's no need for uh, in-depth introduction. I mean, uh, both IDPD-1 and IDPD-L1 uh, targeted uh, antibodies have revolutionized cancer therapy uh, and uh, obviously resulted uh, to um, for Tasuko Konzo get, uh, winning the Nobel Prize uh, of Medicine in 2018. Um, so that was the first um, uh, a molecule we introduced in our system to, and this is actually, especially Nivolumab is the molecule that we always use as benchmarking for all our customer uh, projects. Uh, we used our one-way MLR system, and we selected that because uh, uh, one way, the one-way MLR system is very sensitive to um, uh, PD-1 and PD-L1 blockade um, and provides excellent uh, readouts. And again, uh, as before, we used the comparison within our uh, uh, exhausted cyst, uh, uh, T cells with the non-exhausted uh, T cells. And the first thing we, we assessed was nivolumab in our system, and uh, uh, we used proliferation and uh, interfering production production as our main readouts. And in the left-hand panel, you see um, uh, uh, the typical mixed lymphocyte reaction, which is with non-exhausted T cells. And you can see in the case of proliferation, um, we see a very modest effect in the highest concentrations of uh, nivolumab. However, in the ability of the cells to produce cytokines, this is actually a very huge effect. Um, and we start from a few hundred picograms per mil, and in the highest concentration of nivolumab, we have uh, tens of thousands uh, of picograms per mil. Uh, when we compare that with exhausted uh, uh, T cells, we can see uh, uh, that um, in this case, even the, the 
the effect on proliferation is much more pronounced because we obviously started with a, a much lower uh, background, but we also can see an effect on um, uh, cytokine production. But this obviously is not the same degree as non-exhausted T cells. Similar results we see as, as well with uh, PDL1 blockade, and this is the case with uh, atezolizumab. And as you can see here, uh, this is a full dose response, uh, and, uh, uh, and atezolizumab can also restore uh, um, a proliferative, proliferative capacity of the exhausted T cells in a very similar level as uh, nivolumab. But what about the ability of T cells to uh, induce target cell cytosis? Um, again, uh, we went back to the excellence system in this case, uh, and we um, uh, used uh, scope threes as as our target cells because they express PDL1, and we induced uh, uh, target cell cytosis with the CD3 and CD28 stimulation, and we used pebrolizumab as our PD1 targeted agent. As you can see uh, from this plot, this is from two different donors. Um, there's a clear dose dependent increase in the ability of the exhausted T cells to target the scope of these uh, three cells. Again, demonstrating the ability of this uh, approach to assess uh, checkpoint inhibitors, especially PD1 targeted ones. Uh, so, but however, the, as, you, as you probably have observed, um, uh, PD-1 and PD-1 inhibition only can partially uh, restore the functionality of these exhausted T cells. So, the next question was is whether we can use this model to assess, uh, um, uh, first of all, combination therapies, because obviously this is a very important uh, area of interest uh, to improve uh, uh, PD-1 and PD-1 uh, efficacy, or different modalities, especially for um, uh, uh, pathologies that uh, or patients that are not uh, responding to PD-1 and PD-1 inhibition. So the first story I will talk about is a work we did with I IgM Biosciences on their molecule IgM7354. This is a, a, a dual targeting molecule uh, uh, that uh, and, uh, induces PD-L1 blockade and IL-15 uh, stimula uh, stimulation. Um, IL-15 is a pleiotropic uh, cytokine. It has uh, broad immunostimulatory uh, effects. It enhances T cell and NK cell activity, B cell uh, activation and IgG production, and also innate cell uh, um, activities such as uh, macrophage stimulation and dendritic cell um, uh, immunizing potential. Because of that, um, Various therapeutics are, de are being developed, uh, especially as adjuvant therapeutic or as a combination of therapies, um, and especially the complex formed by IL-15 and the sushi domain of the soluble IL-15 uh, receptor alpha have been shown to be superior than just uh, the IL-15 uh, uh, as it uh, both in the terms of bioavailability and uh, in terms of immunostimulatory effect. So. IgM7354 is a high affinity, high avidity anti PDL1 pandemic IgM antibody with an IL15 receptor alpha chain and IL15 fused to the joining J chain uh, of the molecule. And it is designed to deliver IL15 to PDL1 expressing tumors uh, with an aim to enhance the anti tumor immune response. Uh, the scientists in IgM have already demonstrated that. Um, their molecule can stimulate NK cells or NCD8 T cells, both in vitro and in vivo. So they came to us to, uh, with a question of whether their molecule can also stimulate the functionality of um, uh, the exhausted T cells. So we went back to our uh, um, MLR uh, model. Uh, and again, as before, we assessed uh, uh, proliferation by flow cytometry and um, interferon ground production by, by ELISA in this case. Uh, in this experiment, we use uh, a few different controls. So we used atezolizumab as our kind of benchmark molecule and the single stimulation of uh, IL-15 um, or uh, an IgM uh, PDL1 molecule, or uh, which is similar with uh, uh, with identical to the IgM7354, or obviously an IgG version of the same uh, IgM uh, antibody. And what we've seen was actually the single agents were very uh, good by themselves, uh, uh, stimulating the free gamma production. However, uh, the combined uh, um, uh, uh, action of PDL1 blockade and L15 in the IgM7354 molecule uh, clearly had a synergistic effect. Uh, so there was uh, actually a huge uh, stimulation of interferon gamma production by this case, uh, by this molecule. 
And when we check for uh, uh, proliferation, we could also see uh, a similar effect with IgM 7354 inducing high levels of proliferation, uh, uh, restoring the functionality almost the same level as the non exhausted T cells. However, this seems to be the key driver, I suppose, of this um, uh, uh, stimulation seems to be uh, IL 15 by itself. Uh, this molecule now is approved for phase one clinical trial, and we're looking forward to 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 see the results of this trial uh, in the near future. In the second story, we will uh, move to a different uh, modality. Um, in this case, uh, a small molecule uh, inhibitor, and this is work we did with uh, uh, Nimbus Therapeutic, that is a company that developed a uh, uh, small molecule therapeutic, and one of them uh, is targeting uh, a kinase called the hematopoietic. Hemat hematopoietic progenitor, progenitor kinase 1 or HPK1 uh, for short. This uh, kinase is expressed uh, by many different types of hematopoietic cells and it has been uh, found to regulate the function of uh, T cells and dendritic cells. Um, it is found to express highly in uh, exhausted T cells and it uh, sits downstream of the TCR uh, uh, signaling complex and it has been found to um, uh, specifically, um, uh, phosphorylate the adapter protein SLAP76, allowing the att uh, attraction of other adapter proteins such as 1433, which has an inhibitory uh, role in uh, downstream uh, uh, signaling, T cell signaling. Uh, because of that, uh, HPK1 is a very attractive uh, uh, target for pharmacological inhibition. So, Nimbus Therapeutics has uh, developed. Um, Nimbus 2, uh, a very potent and selective inhibitor of HPK1. And uh, this was demonstrated, the, the potency has been demonstrated both by biochemical and by cell based approaches with nanomolar IC50s and uh, the, the selectivity relatively to MARP4 uh, kinase and other immune cell kinase uh, family members. So the scientists in, uh, uh, from Nimbus Therapeutics already established uh, a lot of uh, um, uh, the immunostimulatory um, uh, characteristics of uh, this inhibitor. So they came to us with the question again whether their uh, small uh, molecule inhibitor could also uh, restore the functionality of the exhausted T cells. So again, we, uh, we used our um, uh, MLR uh, setup, um, and we compared uh, uh, the Nimbus 2 with other uh, with Nivolumab, which is our main benchmark molecule in most of this experiment, or with the combination of uh, uh, Nivolumab with the Nimbus 2 uh, molecule. As you can see clearly, the single agents uh, could uh, stimulate uh, proliferation. Uh, uh, quite well, actually, by themselves. However, this, the combination uh, agent uh, seemed to uh, provide the, an additive effect. And when we assessed uh, cytokine production, we could also see a, a similar uh, response. Actually, we see a synergistic, a synergistic effect in this case um, uh, in both interferon gamma and GMCSF. Again, demonstrated that HPK1 inhibition can uh, restore functionality of the, of the exhausted T cell, especially when it's combined with uh, PD1 inhibition. Uh, as with the IgM molecule, uh, this molecule is also approved for uh, uh, for, for for clinical uh, testing, and again, we're looking forward for the result of, of this trial uh, as well. Um, so, I hope in this uh, few uh, slides, I had uh, I have convinced you that. Um, uh, our human in vitro T cell exhaustion model uh, has all the hallmarks from typical hallmarks of uh, uh, in vivo uh, generated exhausted cells. And um, we can use this model to assess uh, different types of therapeutic of combination of therapeutics. Uh, we have completed multiple projects with this uh, model uh, and assessed different types of therapeutics, and a few of them are already kind of demonstrated today. Uh, and today. And, and we believe this is a very relevant uh, model for assessing uh, T cell exhaustion in an in vitro setting in a relatively high throughput uh, manner. But this is just a snippet of the type of work we can do. Uh, um, we can support uh, uh, your drug development uh, program in, uh, in many different ways. So please uh, come in touch with us and we will uh, uh, help you accelerate your drug development uh, uh, program. 
I would like to thank especially uh, IGM Biosciences and Nimbus Therapeutics that uh, allow us to use the data today in this in this talk, and obviously Agile Technologies that uh, sponsored uh, uh, our webinar today, and obviously everybody from Antibody Analytics that uh, uh, did the work in these projects and the scientists in our lab specifically. Uh, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, uh, I'm happy to uh, uh, answer any questions you might have. Thank you for that very informative presentation, Agapitos. It is now time for our question and answer session. So if you have any further questions, please do send those in. You can submit these by typing into the questions box to the right of your screen. So our first question for you, Agapitos, is can you also generate exhausted T cells with less than four rounds of re-stimulation? And do you also add IL-2 into your culture besides the Dyna beads for re-stimulation in vitro? Yes, thank you very much for the question. So we, well, usually what we do is um, uh, four stimulations and um, we have tried as well with less stimulations and you do uh, get a level of um, uh, dysfunction, uh, similar to what I, I presented today. Um, and related to the other two questions, we, we actually have compared uh, with the presence on the absence of IL-2, and well, actually the presence of IL-2 doesn't seem to, um, I suppose, reverse uh, uh, the or inhibit the generation of exhaustion. Um, so we don't actually use it in our system. Um, uh, especially, however, if you're like, doing like CDA T cells, potentially the presence of um, IL-2 might uh, increase the viability uh, to a degree, um, but we don't use it in our in our hands uh, uh, in a routine basis. Okay, lovely. Thank you. The next one we have is: What do you use as multiple stimulations? Um, so we use uh, uh, well, we have different approaches depending on the setup uh, we, we employ. But um, for what I demonstrated today, uh, we mostly use uh, Dynabits uh, that express CD3, uh, that have CD3 and CD28 targeting antibodies. Okay, lovely. The next one we have is, have you comprehensively characterized gene expression profiles of exhausted T cells from your CD3, CD28 repeat stim? versus T cells exhausted by chronic exposure to tumor cells or peptides slash MHC. And what data do you have besides surface expression of canonical exhaustion markers, suggesting that exhausted T cells generated in your model are similar to T cells exhausted in a tumor microenvironment? Um, that's a, actually a very good uh, question. So um, what we have done actually was um, we have characterized by uh, bulk RNA sequencing um, these cells and we, I suppose, confirmed the, um, at least in the transcript level, um, uh, the expression a lot of um, uh, the markets that are related with exhaustion. A few of them were kind of uh, shown by, uh, I suppose, protein expression where flow cytometry. Um, uh, there was a, there's a difficulty because obviously we used bulk RNA seq to kind of correlate with uh, a lot of the data that exists out there for exhaustion from like patient material because most of them actually are single cell RNA seq. So I suppose at least with our skills of bioinformatics, it becomes a bit more more challenging. Um, but at least into, with the basis of the information we have from our system with the bulk RNA seq, it does I suppose suggest that um, a lot of the I suppose hallmark characteristics of exhaustion, both on the metabolic basis, obviously expression of the different transcription markers and uh, inhibitor molecules, um, uh, do suggest to, to, that resemble with exhausted T cells that you I suppose you could uh, uh, could uh, see in patients, for example. Obviously, this is a um, uh, a reductionist approach, uh, um, so. Obviously, there will be differences with like patient derived, uh, uh, for, for example, tills from uh, uh, patients or uh, with chronic infections. Uh, so we don't expect to be to, for them to be identical, but um, uh, most of the hallmarks of exhaustion are um, uh, uh, encountered in our in our system. And obviously, functionally, the cells do have um, are uh, as I demonstrated today are dysfunctional. So. Um, at least to our uh, to that degree, we we believe that's a, a good um, 
uh, as a post substitute, especially for high throughput screening of uh, multiple molecules or medium throughput, I would say better. Very interesting. Thank you. So the next one we have is for the assay with HeLa cells, do you prime the T cells prior to the assay by co-culture with APCs loaded with HeLa extract? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question as well. Uh, so this is the, specifically for that uh, results are demonstrated with the HeLa cells. We, we actually used, um, as we call it, like a bystander killing approach. So in order to uh, stimulate target cell killing, we uh, introduced an anti-CD3 antibody in, in the system. So it's not a targeted approach, um, uh, for example, by using a, a, a bispecific T-cell engager for a target that is expressed by the HeLa cells. Um, so, so this is, I suppose, a limitation of that specific system. So now we're moving away from that uh, approach and we mainly either use something like a bispecific T-cell engager or we can generate CAR T specific like exhausted T cells. So we have an antigen specific system to a degree that allows us to, um, uh, perf uh, I suppose, this type of assays, the, the targeted killing assays will be more, I suppose, physiologically relevant in a way. Great, thank you. So we have an attendee asking here what is the best antibody for characterization for exhausted T cells? Um, I mean, for us, if I understand the question, if it's for just characterization, uh, the well, the typical markers we use, uh, at least in all our uh, 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 experiments, is minimally we we'll use expression of PD-1 like 3 and TIM-3. Um, and in some cases, we also incorporate like transcription factors, um, things like TOX or uh, uh, TCF1 uh, antibodies. So a combination of this will provide an element of uh, um, I suppose, uh, information of, at least in the phenotype of the cells. But we always use functional characterization as well uh, beyond just the phenotypical because a lot of these markers are also expressed by activated T cells. So um, the functional characterization is very important uh, in, this, uh, in this model. Great. The next one is, would combining this therapy with CAR T cells impre improve their efficacy against solid tumors? Well, um, well, if I understand that, obviously for for CAR T therapy, it's one of I suppose um, limitations, especially in um, in solid tumors. Uh, it is the the, um, uh, well, the development of uh, exhaustion by the, the CAR T cells. So potentially, either I suppose as, as I understand for the type of therapies we demonstrated, um, uh, therapies are developed either the HPK1 inhibitors or I suppose uh, some of the uh, combination therapies either with L15 or PDL1 blockade. Uh, in the theoretical scenario, yes, that 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 there would be potential uh, beneficial as a combination. Um, obviously, there are always the elements of uh, balancing. Uh, uh, therapeutic, therapeutic efficacy with toxicity, so obviously that needs to be tested in 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 the clinic. Useful, thank you. The next one we have is what ratio of T cells to tumor cells do you use? Uh, and again, that depends on the the assays we, we do, the target cell line, and the type of uh, stimulus. For example, like either we use a by specific T cell engager or a bystander killing. We tend, especially with excelsior systems, to use uh, as low as we can, so from like one to one to five to one ratios. Um, uh, but that varies between uh, the different type of experiments uh, we do and the different types of therapeutics we, we assess in the, in the system. Great, thank you. So the next one is, do you plan to, to assess the physiological relevance of this model by comparing the cytokine production capacity of stimulated TILs and the putative exhausted T cells from the model? Also, have you checked granzyme level in these levels? Uh, so, uh, so again, uh, we well, there's two, there's a difficulty on comparing side by side uh, uh, these uh, uh, models with, uh, I suppose, uh, cells coming from uh, uh, tumor biopsies. So obviously, um, uh, that would be an ideal scenario. Obviously, we do not have like similar the same donor. That's kind of challenging uh, uh, to a degree uh, uh, on sourcing these these tissues, but. Um, uh, 
we would well there is a a side-by-side -side element on like the ability of um uh, as taking the tissue sorry, taking the tissues and the cells from the tissues and uh comparing them with a uh i suppose a ex vivo reduction approach is not always uh, um uh, as easy um but we think from for this model is like substituting these approaches and using that and using a, I suppose a teal approach as a secondary um, I suppose orthogonal approach um, uh, to this. Um, so we haven't actually compared them by side by side, but I think it's a good supplementary methodology to using like teals and things like that. Beautiful, thank you. The next one we have is: Do you think exhaustion is reversible to some level? Well, yes, it is. I mean, there's different levels of exhaustion. There's, um, uh, and I suppose, as Tim mentioned in the talk, um, there is almost like a hierarchical uh, 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 approach, I suppose, on, as the cells exhausted, they downregulate uh, uh, the description half of TCF1. But um, uh, obviously, with PD1 inhibition, there is, uh, it's kind of clearly demonstrated you can. Uh, reverse this exhaustion. The big question is whether we can um, uh, uh, address like terminally exhausted T cells that seem to be more resistant to PD1 and PDL1 inhibition uh, to a degree. And I suppose like um, I suppose some of the combination uh, approaches I mentioned here um, might be uh, I suppose a solution uh, to that. But yeah, I, I do I do believe that uh, uh, exhaustion can be reversed. Uh, uh, with different approaches. I mean, from the level of like blocking inhibitor receptors to changing the uh, epigenetic kind of landscape of the exhausted T cells to changing their ability to use energy as well. Great, thank you. Um, we have an attendee asking whether you have tested metabolic reprogramming in the exhausted and restored cells. So we have uh, used um, molecules, unfortunately, because it's a client molecules, I cannot say more details, but we have did, used uh, this type of molecules in the system with quite interesting results. Um, so, yeah. Lovely. The next one we have is, do you have any data with increasing the length of time between re-stimulation and whether longer periods allow for the same level of resilience to exhaustion? Um, so we we did some limited work uh, on that. Um, and there are some publications with, uh, I suppose, similar type of approaches um, that you can use longer uh, intervals between stimulations and up to... I suppose um, 16 days, the whole process, um, uh, and you get similar um, um, type of uh, responses. Um, so, but the stimuli might be a bit different. So, in that case, it's, uh, in a lot of this uh, publication, they use under specific um, uh, stimulation through the T cell receptor, uh, which might not be as um, strong as the Dynabits. So, I mean, based on the stim stimulus, uh, I would play about with the different, uh, uh, I suppose, uh, intervals of stimulation. Beautiful. The next question we have is, how do you think strong stimulation with CD3, CD28 dynabeads reflects T-cell stimulation in the tumour setting where antigen levels are usually low? Um, so, I mean, that's a very good question, actually. So, um, well, the levels of antigen, I suppose, in some cases, when we have low levels of aggression of uh, MST class one, it is uh, obviously, um, I suppose, it results in a different, I suppose, type of stimulation rather than dynabits. Uh, however, the end results for us, in similar, I suppose, if you compare like chronic uh, viral infections versus uh, the the type of um, stimulation you have in the tumor microenvironment. So we would truly expect to be, uh, not to be 100% the same. Uh, what we see in the, in the model is that we generate a lot of these characteristics with this uh, uh, st very strong stimulation that allows us to use it for, for testing therapeutics, um, at least as a 
uh, I suppose, level one uh, approach. Um, so we'd always suggest to use uh, orthogonal approaches. So either, as I suppose mentioned before, uh, using like tissue-based uh, approaches, um, uh, or obviously like uh, animal models or things like that as a, as a secondary approach. Um, in the element of, so we are, we are kind of very aware about this, uh, uh, this issue ourselves and we try to kind of generate a kind of version two of, of the model that we're going to use um, antigen specific uh, T cell receptor mediated uh, activation. And we hope to have data for that in the next uh, 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 few months. Um, so I suppose uh, there's always there's no there's not nothing perfect in in science uh, in all cases. So again, uh, I would like to kind of note that this is an uh, as an reductionist approach that allows uh, assessment of um, uh, molecules and uh, a great number of molecules in uh, many occasions um, uh, in a way that it's prohibitive in uh, if we use like tissues or anything like that due to, again to, to limitations in actions and amount of material we have at least in a human setting okay thank you the next question is what are the donors pre-screened for which correlates to the assay or experiment success um so we prescreen them for the um, especially for the mlr system we prescreen for our reactivity to ensure that we don't have um, issues with a secondary uh, read that we have for the MLR. And we also screen them for the, I mean, the consistency of the uh, generation of a T cell is quite high, so we never have that issue. So our main consideration is um, uh, our reactivities for MLR assays. So this is usually what we would do before uh, the assays. Okay, thank you. The next question we have is, can repeated antigen-specific re-stimulations also cause T-cell exhaustion? Uh, yes, uh, so there are. Um, um, we have kind of uh, uh, done that in with CAR T type of approaches. Um, there are also publications in mouse systems that they use the OT1 um, uh, model um, that, again, you can uh, generate uh, exhausted like T-cells, I think is... Uh, Quite important to, to note that. Um, uh, so yes, 100% you can do that. Lovely. And then the next one we have is since the exelligence is a label-free system, have you tried to collect the T-cells after the killing and do the characterize subsequently? So yeah, with a lot of our assays, we will do characterization um, after uh, the uh, some of killing acid, I haven't shown you any data today, but we'll usually assess uh, expression of the different uh, markers, um, like things like uh, team three, like three. Um, we would also assess proliferation um, uh, uh, and other, well, it depends on like what uh, the question on the specific experiment might be. So this is something we quite routinely do. Lovely. The next question we have is, what are the main hallmarks of exhaustion in CAR natural killer cells? Um, if I understand CAR natural killer cells, I mean, in general, in NK cells, uh, there are elements on the, I suppose, uh, epigenetic and suppose metabolic uh, hallmarks of exhaustion that are shared to a degree with, with, with CD8 T cells. There's different types of... Um, I suppose surface inhibitory markers that might be associated with NK cell exhaustion that is more related to, um, uh, I suppose, uh, NK, less things like NK2A, for example, uh, have been associated with uh, uh, exhaustion of NK cells. So um, that, I suppose, uh, and I suppose some of the other, um, uh, also things like uh, TIM3 and PD1 have been also reported in NK cells. So. There is an element of overlap, but they're not uh, identical to CD8 T cells, uh, as opposed to the levels of expression as well. Uh, functionally, the, obviously, the, the types of functional responses of NK cells, even though they're not as well, um, I suppose, uh, characterized in the terms of exhaustion as CD8 T cells, uh, you expect similar, um, like this, uh, inability to uh, kill target cells and reduce ability to produce cytokines. So always like the, the surface expression or even any transcription characterization should be associated with um, functional readouts to, um, 
to validate any type of uh, system like that. Okay, and then quickly for our last question, what is the timeline used for the repeated stimulation? Um, again, this differs in, depending on what type of uh, question we want to answer. The usual thing we will do is we stimulate the cells every two to three days um, for about for four rounds of stimulation um, before we introduce them in any uh, assays. Okay, lovely. Well, that's all we have time for today. I would like to thank our expert speaker, Agapitos, for the informative presentation and discussion, and a big thank you to everyone joining us online. We hope you have found this a worthwhile session. If you have any further questions, please feel free to email me at editor at selectscience.net, and I will follow up with your questions for our speaker. Remember, you can download rela related resources in the tab to the left of your screen, and this includes the certificate of attendance. If you'd like to listen again to today's webinar or invite a friend to listen, it will be available to watch on demand in just a few days. Goodbye and thank you once again for joining us.